everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to be trying on the new Shu Uemura Unlimited Glow Foundation. Now if you've seen the original Unlimited Foundation range, it comes in a matte glass bottle similar to this but just with frosted packaging. And that is a matte, airy light longwear finish that's supposed to feel really weightless on the skin and last throughout the day. Obviously this version is supposed to give you a very glowy finish so it's gonna look completely different but we hope that it's gonna stay airy light and also stay fresh looking for most of the day. Now alongside the foundation, Shu Oemura has also launched the Sponge 55 Sponge. It's kind of a strange name. Now this is a sponge version of the Petal 55 brush which they launched a while back. And somehow I feel like this is a little bit internet famous because there were so many brands just kind of duping and copying this and not crediting Shu Oemura. Now mine is obviously stained, I have just used it so I apologize for that. But you can see that it has the same general shape as the Petal. 55 brush except that this is pretty much like a flat blender and this one obviously has those tens of thousands of bristles for a seamless blend. So what I'm going to do today is use sponge 55 on this side of my face and petal 55 on this side so you should be able to see if there's any difference in application. Now Shu Oemura describes this as a breathable care-in foundation. So it's supposed to give you all-day hydration, be lightweight and provide a natural and authentic glow. They also promise that it will be comfortable and long-lasting, well, up to 12 hours of colour true wear. It's got light and fresh texture with SPF 18, it provides natural coverage and protection and it's also infused with Japanese white peony flowers and roots for their skin hydrating and clarifying properties. So they do suggest that you use this with the new sponge 55 for seamless application and a lit from within kind of a glow. If you need a shade reference, I use 664 and when I'm a little more tan, I use a 564. Initial impressions, the smoothing glow was immediately apparent once the foundation goes on. It's got a very seamless, very polished cream skin finish, which is really popular right now. Uh, I would say it's a little bit more on the side of being dewy than it is satin, so this reminds me a little bit of the old school light bulb foundation, which I used to love before they reformulated it. The coverage is, I would say, about a soft medium and obviously if you use your fingers to pat or a blender sponge to just bounce it on, you will get the maximum coverage and you'll get a sheerer finish if you use a brush or you kind of drag your sponge across your face. 
Uh, first impressions wise, this does have that beautiful lit from within kind of a finish, but as with most of these kinds of formulas, I will need to wear this for a few more hours before I let you know how it sits because this could just as well break down in about two hours and start looking not quite so flattering. But it does a pretty decent job of evening out the complexion and neutralizing discolorations without looking like heavy makeup. I don't feel any tackiness or residual moisture on my skin right now, even on the areas where I didn't powder down too much. It feels very, very light. It feels very weightless. And I think that might be what is the most impressive about this, considering how much of a radiant, luminous finish it has. Now, the application of the foundation itself was definitely faster with the Petal 55 brush, which I used on this side of my face. However, it doesn't quite give the same level of coverage as a sponge, obviously because all these thousands and thousands of bristles are kind of blending but also removing quite a bit of the foundation at the same time. It doesn't matter how much the brands claim that their brush does not absorb product, they always will. So if you want the maximum, maximum bang for your buck when it comes to not wasting product, use your fingers. And that's it for the first half of this review. I am going to head off now, spend some time with my family, go do some grocery shopping, get some lunch. Obviously, while I'm out, I will be wearing a face mask. And at the end of the day, I will check back in and let you guys know how it's worn, whether it's broken down, gathered around my pores and all that kind of stuff, or if it's still looking all fresh and glowy. And hello, welcome back. It is now almost 7 p.m. So I've been wearing this for about nine hours now. And let's have a closer look. I'm definitely shiny around the nose and the inner cheek area. This is my slightly oilier zone. And uh, on the chin, it's kind of a little bit shiny, but not quite broken down yet. But I can see that it's really starting to break down around the folds on the sides of my nostrils, which is pretty common, especially for slightly dewier or glowier foundations and cushions in general. Definitely some noticeable creasing under the eyes. You know, it's basically where all my smile lines are and the folds are kind of stuck there. This is my dry zone. So this isn't something that I can just tap and fix like you would if you had slightly oilier skin. Overall though, I have to say this is pretty decent wear for how long it's been on and for the fact that I was actually out in the middle of the day with a face mask on. You can see that this has definitely rubbed off on the bridge of the nose and all around the sides of my mouth where the mask was just kind of rubbing around. However, here you don't see any patchiness which means it has quite a graceful fade, so it transfers, it comes off, it's not really a long wear foundation, I'm not expecting it to be, but it doesn't look patchy on the skin for some reason, it's still looking quite nice. So what this tells me is that if you have relatively decent skin, you don't have a lot of unevenness or blemishes that you need to cover around this side of your face, then this might be a foundation that looks pretty fresh and even as it wears away, it stays looking pretty nice on the skin. But if you have very oily skin and you have blemishes and texture, this is not probably going to be the best foundation option for you just because it's not really going to lock on. If you were to touch your skin, if you have oiliness, um, this probably is just going to transfer right off. Now I'm going to do a quick blot as usual just to see if the foundation is intact after I lift the oil off. Okay, so it was a pretty long day and this is quite a bit of oil for me. Surprisingly, um, around these shiny areas where I lifted most of the oil off, it's looking fresh. Whereas on the dry zones, um, where it started to look kind of a little bit cakey and not quite so nice, um, obviously it's still not looking that great. So even if you have combination skin, as long as you lift the oil off, you know, a couple of times throughout the day, this looks like a foundation that's able to stay on and actually stay pretty fresh looking. It doesn't feel tacky. I'm not getting any transfer after the oil comes off. And 
you can also see on the blotting sheet that the oil came off but not the pigment so it actually did stick to my skin. As for sponge 55, you know, I just cleaned it earlier and you can see it's pretty easy to clean. I just put a little bit of soap on my hand and, you know, just water and dampen it, rubbed it around. Everything just came right off with a little bit of gentle squeezing. So I'm not gonna lie, this one point does impress me quite a bit. However, do I really think this is worth 45 bucks? I'm still not really sold on it. I mean, it did a very nice job of sort of buffing and polishing the product into the skin and giving that beautiful glass-like glow. However, again, I don't know, the shape, uh, it's just not really easy to use this on the entire face. Even on the forehead, it was a little bit tricky. I would just say if you have a very generous budget, it's no harm checking this out. It's quite a nice and interesting tool to use. Uh, but if you're a real beginner, you have a little bit of problems blending things around or you have a tendency to miss spots, then this may not be a great one for you. So that is the quick review and I really quite like it. Now, I do feel there are some similarities in the texture and the finish plus the skincare properties and how it sits on the skin between the uh, Unlimited Glow formula and the Milani Screen Queen formula. So uh, I don't want to say they're exact dupes for one another, but if you are looking just for a very fresh looking foundation that sits very light on the skin, neutralizes discolorations quite well without being mask-like, this is an alternative if you are tight on your budget. Of course, if you're really into your luxury makeup, then packaging, presentation, everything is just gorgeous on this one. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you've tried this foundation, please let me know in the comments below what you think of it. Or if you have other fresh, glowy foundations that you really like, do let us know what they are as well. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.